have our it's next really talk fun. that is okay. about to start. Okay. It will be so, given by Vladimir Dushenko. Yep. Unfortunately, his partner Sergey could not be here, so he's going to be handling this one solo. And it's going to be on pawning the industrial IoT, RCEs, and backdoors are around. All right, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, our session with Sergey. He's supposed to be standing right here next to me, but unfortunately, he cannot come here due to like a uh, super long process of getting visa to United States. But anyway, Sergey, hi. And um, yeah, today, uh, me and Sergey, we're going to talk about the uh, different vulnerabilities that we have identified for the last, I guess, 15 months in different uh, industrial devices. But uh, we will be focusing on the uh, industrial Internet of Things. So I will give a brief explanation what is the industrial Internet of Things, uh, what we have uh, identified. But first, uh, I would like to mention that uh, me and Sergey, we are working at the uh, non-profit project uh, uh, in Kaspersky Lab, it's called Kaspersky Lab ICS Cert. And um, basically, what we do, uh, we do different vulnerability research, we do different sophisticated malware analysis, we're uh, tracking different sophisticated attacks on the industrial components and stuff like that. So, we are a group of people uh, who has like different and super cool background in malware analysis, penetration testing. Uh, security audits, um, security and analysis, and blah, blah, blah. All right. So what is the uh, industrial Internet of Things? So you guys probably know that there are like normal general Internet of Things r like right behind you, right? So this is a new type of the concept, like general Internet of Things, a uh, new type of the concept when um, different vendors are trying to make uh, any product smart. Smart this, smart that, everything is smart, people are smart, things are smart. But industrial world, world is also trying to go towards that way. So you probably can uh, hear about or heard about the uh, different smart meters, smart devices and stuff like that. It helps to industrial companies to lower the expenses on different things. For example, uh, smart meters are trying to uh, help to track how much electricity are we using and like maybe we can like reduce the usage of electricity somewhere. Anyway, so this concept uh, means that everything is connected. The smart industrial devices are also connected, right? And uh, they are uh, connected with the like uh, operators level. So uh, all the information, uh, all the metadata is going to the operators level. So the human can process that and can see like what's going on with the data. Uh, yeah, basically what is industrial IoT? Yeah, it's a fancy and cool concept, right? And it's a fancy and cool uh, solution. But still, it has the old security problems. If we will take a look, if we will like see the low-hanging fruits and the vulnerabilities, even in uh, new solutions in uh, industrial control systems and uh, yeah, uh, industrial IoT stuff, uh, we will see that there are also still hard-coded passwords. Um, I don't know, super stupid uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and stuff like that. But there is something bigger. Um, this is the basic statistics, statistics uh, that we have uh, identified. Uh, so how many vulnerabilities and types of the vulnerabilities we have found. Uh, as you can see, the, the major part is, uh, go, goes to the Daniel service uh, vulnerabilities. But the thing is that in industrial world, uh, DOS uh, vulnerabilities can be way more dangerous than remote code executions. So, uh, if there is like a technological process and uh, the attacker is trying to exploit the Daniel of Service vulnerability, that vulnerability, uh, the, that exploitation can stop the whole technological process. So, they will start using the money, uh, losing the money, and, or uh, something more dangerous can happen. Uh, yeah, we also found several injections, uh, file manipulations, and there is one vulnerability right here, the account manipulations. 
uh, it's basically it's not a bug it's a feature uh, I was told by the vendor so the thing is that uh, the remote attacker can uh, disable legitimate user for like two or three hours so the user will be blocked totally so we submitted that vulnerability to the vendor and he, uh, the vendor was like hey you know what it's not a bug it's a feature you can increase the time like in the configuration file I was like well okay it's not gonna take like two hours not two hours but three hours and they were like uh, we can just uh, input this uh, you know thing in our FAQ document so they can just increase the time till ten hours I was like well uh, it doesn't make any sense so um, uh, there is no CVE for that type of vulnerability but well looks funny anyway so basic uh, vulnerability research approach. Uh, first we start the, uh, researching the custom made protocols. It's super cool and it's super interesting to uh, go deeper into the like custom made protocols. Then we start uh, playing with uh, DCOM, um, DCOM protocol and then we uh, were playing with OPC UA. Uh, did anyone heard about the OPC UA? Cool. Interesting. That's awesome. So OPC UA, uh, it's uh, it's a concept. It's uh, open source uh, type of the protocol and the way of communications of the devices. So uh, yeah, the source code is is available. And basically, th this is like a Lego for industrial companies. So using those tiny bricks of the OPC, uh, any company, any vendor can build like a huge system on that. And the new uh, approach is the common solutions. So we have identified that uh, there are lots and lots of different common solutions among the like like uh, hundreds of different vendors. So here are the uh, the examples. The first thing is about the custom uh, implementation of the <coughs> excuse me uh, about the uh, ex custom implementation of the XML. So we have identified that uh, if you're inputting the random data without knowing any, uh, you know, tags, uh, the server side returns you the uh, basically what are the uh, tags and what are the fields should be the legitimate fields. We were like, okay, that 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 looks interesting. So basically, if you input like xxx uh, the xxx thing. It starts, uh, you know, comparing if there is a field naming xxx with the real ones, and he's like, uh, this thing is going through the whole thing and uh, shows like, if xxx is equal to uh, like uh, AC, EC computer object and blah blah blah, uh, then we uh, enhance that thing and like we have found that there are like different and different so we basically have built the whole tree of the XML that looks great and that uh, basically gave us the remote code execution but it wasn't the binary remote code execution it was the logical remote code execution uh, which looks uh, better than the binary one the second, uh, the second example is about the OPC uh, custom implementation. So this is basically the whole proof of concept of the Daniel of service. Well, um, we have like internal feeling that there is a remote code execution behind that, but we still ha uh, haven't found the uh, the way how to exploit the remote code execution. So. Um, yeah, this is the example how the uh, the how we have identified that, and you have just you just need to send the, like a tiny packet to exploit the vulnerability, and that's it. the The system goes down. And my favorite example. So if you probably if you remember how my presentation. Yeah, let let me just show the name of the presentation, right here, right. So you see, like there are remote code, e remote code executions, and this word. Um, this this vendor didn't want me to to name that word, so I decided to change that word into the other one. You will see now. So yeah. 
uh, custom protocol, but first custom protocol. So first we have identified this thing uh, just in uh, like ICS and uh, in, uh, industrial uh, IoT things, but it became huge, like super huge. So uh, there is a custom made protocol. So if you um, interact with that protocol as with the uh, HTTP server, it will work with you as like HTTP server. If you input binary data, it allows you to do like some binary things with that. So, uh, what happened? These guys, they had a custom made, you know, packer uh, for, for their solution. So they wanted to protect uh, their solution uh, from like uh, researching and stuff like that. But, for some reason, for some reason, they have removed, removed uh, well-known security things. For example, uh, canary stack, like uh, uh, safe cookie and stuff like that. Basically, what does it mean? Uh, if you find like the, the, the point where the, this thing crashes, you can just go, like you can just uh, exploit the remote code execution like super good. So if you, I don't know, I oh, don't know. If you pay an attention, you will see that there is like AAA, and so it goes like uh, really good and fast. So it allows you to do the remote code executions. But after after we have submitted the vulnerability to the uh, to this vendor, strange things started happening. Uh, we submitted the vulnerability uh, in December December fifth, uh, two thousand. Uh, what is it? Sixteen. Sixteen. Right. So we submitted them two different uh, remote code executions and 11 Daniel service. Uh, then I sent one more reminder because I didn't get any feedback from them. Uh, then I sent one more reminder and one more reminder. And um, in January of 2017, I got the feedback from the, uh, them that they received our uh, vulnerability report and, and stuff like that. Uh, then I was sending them reports almost every month, but nothing happened. Uh, so they were just sending me back like, uh, like, hey, just, uh, yeah, thanks for your email. Uh, you just have to wait for our feedback. Uh, then they, uh, in, when was it, May or June, they have uh, submitted uh, a new version of the driver, but they didn't make any announcement. After I didn't know that, and our team didn't know that, and we were still sending them emails, and they were still replying that, "Hey, we're still wor working on that problem." But the driver was updated. Uh, it turns out that even after the driver was updated, uh, the uh, they didn't submit the new version of the driver to the, to the like Microsoft. So if you update your Windows system, it will not get the new version of the driver. That's, that looks strange. Um, after we decided to do this DEF CON talk on this vulnerability, I have sent them email saying that, hey guys, we're gonna do like uh, IoT Village uh, talk on the DEF CON about this vulnerability. And they were like, oh, hold on a second. We got the, uh, we got actually the advisory published, but the advisory is uh, on the like private website. So you cannot like, get it like online so you have to get the uh, you have to log in somewhere get the advisory and stuff like that they didn't want to submit any CVEs so we did that for them um, and uh, yeah we of course no notified the um, US ICS cert on this vulnerability because the thing is that uh, first we thought that this vulnerability is only like in a, like super custom made solution and it and we didn't pay any attention but th then we start like looking deeper and wider and we have identified that it's super huge. Uh, yeah, so those CVEs uh, are, uh, are ready. It turns out that these guys, they work with the thousands and thousands vendors under the OEM, um, how's it, under the OEM thing. And uh, basically, each vendor has thousands of the clients, right? So we still don't know how many uh, people and how many companies are still vulnerable. Uh, and we don't know how to notify everyone. We didn't know how to notify everyone to, uh, up uh, to update the driver. So the st strange things started happening. Uh, we continued our research on that. 
and we have identified several strange functions yeah some functionality okay so basically what if you can remotely remotely uh, turn on and turn off the administrative panel using undocumented uh, API functions what if you can remotely make a configurations on the uh, do the uh, changes in the configuration file using the legitimate API functions again and it will not be uh, so the ad uh, security administrator will not see that right how how do you call that what's the name for that I'm not allowed to say that word but anyway so it turns out that the, those guys were doing some stuff someday. I have no idea when. So when we reported this uh, functionality, undocumented functionality to them, they were like, no, no, it's not, it's not a bear. It's not that thing. It's our mistake in the code. And we were like, hey, we, you just have a hidden functionality like in your uh, solution, right? But like, how, how, how can we manage that? So how, we, how can we how you ca cannot agree with this word and they were like no we don't agree with this word so we decided to call like not a bare thing uh, yeah um, this is the basically what I have just said like remotely enable and disable admin administrative pa panel it's non documented uh, and the panel is available by default on like uh, the local host right and the other thing is that uh, basically uh, if you have a Windows based computer right and the computer is locked right so you can just take this thing you know this USB device like it's official thing from from the vendor like it's not fake you just plug in this thing right what happens next the driver the vulnerable version of the driver is being uploaded from the like uh, Microsoft servers, right? The uh, this thing opens a port. The port is being added to the like uh, a legitimate and open port to the uh, Windows firewall, and the vid Windows firewall allows that port open, and that's it. That's done. Basically, right? Uh, you have the like the vulnerable. Uh, Windows machine with open port and with some strange functionality. So we started researching that thing, and so the yeah the uh, 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 manipulations with the configuration file. So basically, you can change the the uh, proxy server for the binary updates. So if the attacker uh, changed the proxy server for the binary updates, so you know what's going to happen. And we also have identified that uh, it, it is possible it is possible to capture the NTLM hash of the built-in uh, user of like uh, there are several built-in users in the Windows operation system so you can capture that NTLM hash function and that's it so we submitted the thing to the vendor and they were like hey you cannot do the SMB relay attack I was like yeah of course we cannot do because like it's a built-in uh, user so it's not possible but still uh, there is a possibility to do that so we decided to uh, we agreed with the vendor to publish uh, this uh, advisory so but the thing is that we don't want to leave the world like you know vulnerable uh, we decided to provide like open source and free oval definitions so they are available and you can download them and you you can use the Mitre tool uh, to you know to play with those oval rules oval definitions and you can check if your system vulnerable or not vulnerable to that thing. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, the uh, alert is being avail is available here uh, under this link. Link. And uh, so, what are the conclusions? So, if th the best thing is uh, which can help to protect this world is knowledge sharing. If you share the knowledge, like everyone will be protected. The second thing is, well, if you made a mistake someday, you have to admit it you have to admit that well there was a problem but we are doing our best to fix the vulnerabilities and of course if you are going towards the uh, new concepts for example industry 4.0 or like industrial internet of things or blah 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 whatever 
Well, you have to do it right. You have to put the security on the basement. Everything should be secured by design, not like, you know, those things. And of course, if there are different uh, third party solutions I used in, in a huge like industrial or uh, industrial systems or industrial internet of things, you have to test them properly. So if you are like if there are any vendors and if you are using the different third party solutions, you have to test them first. You have to see like the source code or you have to do the vulnerability research of that. So you have to work you have to do what you have to do. Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's different. It's different. Uh, our dip, uh, so our research group is working uh, on the uh, so we're cert with like we're like a computer emergency response team. So uh, what do we do? We do the like vulnerability research, incident response. Uh, if the customer asks us uh, to do the penetration testing, we do that. So it's like we're research department, the uh, research group of people. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I can't hear. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Let me show you. So yeah, you're talking about like this case. Um, yeah. So basically, they have turned off, uh, not turned off, but they didn't use, uh, for example, safe cookie. There, there, uh, there is a special uh, mechanism. It's called like safe cookie, and they didn't use that like uh, when they were writing uh, the code for that binary, and like they didn't use like a really common and world known uh, security mechanisms. All right.